Moab's like Disneyland for off-roaders. There, there's so many attractions, so much to see and so much to do. Every attraction's an e-ticket here. Moab is the mecca of off-roading, bar none. I think it's on almost everybody's bucket list. Everybody I've talked to who hasn't been here says, I'm going someday. It's like a roller coaster ride, wonderful and fun, and it is spectacular, and I'm so glad I came. I want to come back and do it again. You know, some of the names and the reputations of these trails are uh, intimidating. This is unfamiliar territory for a lot of us, and so uh, there's a little bit of intimidation factor just from the unfamiliarity. Moab is well known for their jeeping trails. It's been on my bucket list for forever, and it's, it's just a lifelong dream. On day one, we did Poison Spider. Poison Spider is a great trail. It's beautiful. Just getting to Poison Spider, just the drive along the Colorado River is beautiful. Just these gorgeous views of mountains with the sun reflecting off of the river come into view, and it's just beautiful. Driving along the river to Poison Spider, up to Wall Street there, so, so spectacular. And then uh, getting to the trailhead and heading up the trail, the obstacles, everything was new. We spent probably seven hours on Poison Spider Trail. It's about 15 miles long. It's not that long of a trail, but there are several challenges. As you make your way up the switchbacks, which you have to be very careful as you go up because you've got sheer drops, hundreds of feet right off the side. One mistake is gonna be a bad day. When you start out, you get a lot of good rock uh, formations that are embedded in the hillside while you do the switchbacks. Challenges get rougher and rougher. So we took it slow because we have a big group. was trying to take a line, it was a little harder, and his rear tire was uh, getting hung up on the rock, couldn't get it. Now he's gonna pick a new line. On the first day we were here, I think the adrenaline was rushing, and the first minor obstacle I just had to get off because it was tilting too much on my side. So I, I couldn't handle it. <laughs> Smart! I decided not to bring my own Jeep. I have a 98 TJ, she's quite capable, but I decided not to bring her for this trip. So I decided to rent a Jeep here. I did a little bit of shopping and uh, decided to, uh, to rent a JL. Took a, little, took a little while to find where the switches are, huh? This was my bucket list vacation, so I decided to do it up. You know, my goal is to, to drive the heck out of that rental Jeep without breaking it. 
And um, I've done some things in this rental Jeep that I wouldn't have done in my own Jeep. I've got this wide, long wheelbase and plenty of ground clearance in a very well-equipped Jeep. Automatic transmission instead of a stick shift. And uh, uh, just amazed at what this, this rig is capable of. It, it's made this, um, this trip such a pleasure because I haven't worried about not being able to do something or uh, just being over intimidated by an obstacle. Come on, big stallion. Up, up. Been able to uh, get capable at driving this rig within a matter of uh, hours. And, uh, you know, by day three, I'm ready to wheel. It's, it's great. I, I have so much trust and confidence in this machine that I can enjoy the whole experience without worrying about breaking something or um, getting stuck. Since I've been here in Moab, the part that, that I love about it is all the scenery. It's all different. There's no two rocks alike. There's no two trails alike. It's, it's just incredibly beautiful. When they say Moab, it's a bucket list for a lot of off-roaders. Everybody dreams of getting to Moab because it's so well-known and it's so popular and it's so unique. There's really no place like it in the world to off-road. The sights were just spectacular. The bluffs, the cliffs, the red earth, things I hadn't seen before. I could go on sightseeing trips on the on paved roads here and, and just be overwhelmed with the majesty of, of what's here. And to be on those back roads and see things that very few people on the planet probably ever get a chance to see and to experience it, just incredible. Moab is well-known throughout the world. Jeepers actually have put their Jeeps on a cargo ship, shipped them over here just so they could wheel their Jeep here, because it's basically the mecca of off-roading. All kinds of vehicles come out here, but mostly this is known for Jeeps. It's unique. Everybody who does it at least once, they say it was worth doing because I've never done a trail like that and there's no trail like that anywhere and that's why people come here. If you want something different, you come to Moab and you get a whole different experience and I think that's a draw for people, off-roaders. It's on almost everybody's bucket list. Everybody I've talked to, who hasn't been here says, I'm going someday. Everybody who's been here said it was on their list, they loved it, hopefully they can come back someday. On day two, we did uh, Hell's Revenge. I think it's the most popular trail in Moab. You get to the parking lot of Hell's Revenge and 10 feet off of the parking lot, you're on the trail. 10 feet in, you're already hitting the action. It's not like you're waiting to find your first obstacle. The gatekeeper is a 
intimidating fin that has a sheer drop straight down on each side and it's barely wide enough for your Jeep. And you're riding along a fin basically with nothing on either side. I'm gonna stay. Getting on it, it the, the width is just a, wide enough to keep your Jeep on it. So you need to really concentrate and keep your Jeep straight. And it takes you a little off camber and it'll be some pucker factor there. You have to get on that fin and you have to basically just stay right up the middle of it as you come up over the hump. And you have to be really careful because there's nothing on either side. But all you see is a Jeep in front of you and blue sky and pretty much cliffs on each side. Sitting in the passenger, it's like sitting on a roller coaster because you can't see. All I could see was the top of the hood, and it's like a roller coaster ride where you're just waiting to get to the top and then free fall down. All I can think was keeping my eyes forward and not looking down. You just got to keep your eyes forward. You can't change radio stations. You're not talking to your friends. You're not reaching into the cooler. If you make a mistake and you're not paying attention and you move your wheel just slightly the wrong direction, right or left, it could mean disaster. It's really a matter of uh, mind over matter. You forget about what's happening on the, on the outside edges of the road that you're on. Just focus on, on the track that you're on. At the rental agency, they gave me some advice. They said, there's trail markers in the center of the trail. Follow the markers. They said, if you get to an extreme obstacle, line yourself up between those lines that will put you in the right direction to be successful on that obstacle. And that was great advice. It worked. Revenge was probably the scariest ride I've ever done. The first initial gatekeeper freaked me out and the rest of the day was non-stop excitement and drama and I was pretty scared the entire day. I was stressed out the entire day. <laughs> There are people that uh, will just say, okay, I, that's not for me. I didn't do it. I'm not ashamed to say I was not comfortable doing it. And I'm glad I didn't because even though what I've read is that, oh, if you can do the gatekeeper right at the beginning of the trail, you'll be fine the rest of the day. Well, I rode along with someone the rest of the day and there is more to Hell's Revenge than just that gatekeeper. It goes on with hill after hill after hill, steep downhills, steep uphills. It was amazing to watch the Jeeps go up. It was amazing to watch the other people that were very intimidated also. I don't think there was anybody that day that wasn't intimidated. It was amazing to watch the Jeeps make it up these steep hills and some of the extra credit obstacles that were just amazing. Right from the trail, there's a beautiful view of Lion's Back. I've seen videos of it, and in the videos, the Lion's Back looks pretty intimidating. But when I got out of my Jeep, I was amazed at how long and high and steep and narrow that thing is. This is way steeper and way higher and way scarier looking than you could even imagine. This is the famous Lion's Back. It used to get wheeled all the time. But one time a Chevy Blazer was coming down and they lost their brakes. And the lady who was uh, operating the Blazer, she rode it out really well. She came down and she was bumping and, and just riding it out as best she could. And then she went right off the fin, straight to the ground and just boom, in a big puff of dust, uh, that was the end of uh, that Blazer. No more wheeling up the uh, lion's back after that because she got hurt pretty bad.
vertical yeah, going yeah, even We're going to take a look at Hell's Gate. If it's empty, we might just come and run this right now. We'll see how it looks. Hell's Gate is about 150 feet of a V-notch, a very deep V-notch. I was told I could do Hell's Gate in my TJ, but after watching several people do it and then taking a look at how to get down to it, I chickened out. I was too chicken to take my Jeep, so I hitched a ride. <laughs> The entrance to Hell's Gate is actually more challenging than the actual Hell's Gate itself. Nice. <laughs> all the videos are of people going up Hell's Gate. The video doesn't do it justice, that's all I gotta say. There's no video of people going down that I know of. Oh my God. But that was probably the scariest of all of it. It was very, very steep. And then this is the part I don't like, right? Here. So I'm heading over to the obstacle, and then I realized that the downhill is way more scary than the uphill that I was worried about. So when I finally made it to the bottom of the entrance, Beautiful scenery, you got some trees, and then you just see this big, huge V-notch, what they call Hell's Gate, and you see all the black tire marks going up, and it's a long ways up, and then you kind of have an idea of how steep it is when you see the people. They kind of give you an idea, the perspective of how vertical the climb is going up there. Quite a, it's like a roller coaster ride. Mama mia. <laughs> it was wonderful and fun, and I'm so glad I did it. I was so chicken to do it in my Jeep, but I'm so glad I rode along. It was quite an adventure. <laughs> You're on it, you only want to go forward. There's lots of obstacles I've done in my life where oh, I could back down that if I can't make it. This is one obstacle you do definitely don't want to back down. It's, it's a forward only obstacle. As long as you got good friends spotting you and uh, know which way you're going. It was just one forward motion, kept you know, kept my gears low and uh, kept looking forward, looking out my windshield. Most people make a mistake, they look out the side of their door, outside of their window, and they look at one tire. You actually just want to figure out where your tires are looking through your windshield. That's that's the best way to drive.
About three quarters in uh, the trail, you get to a really unique area. It's called the hot tub. The first one's called the car wash. It's almost straight up and down to get in. You have to go at one angle, drop down, nose down, butt in the air, and you only see the bottom. Scrapes all over, black marks, walls on both sides, you're going in a hole. And then you pull forward and then you're going up because it's immediate up. And you're up, 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 and you're looking at the sky until you have to pull up and turn immediately before you go off the side the other way. And the third one is the most popular. It's called Mickey's Hot Tub. If you're gonna take your Jeep in there, it better be the well, most well-built, awesome, <laughs> capable Jeep. A lot of people have gone up and spilled backwards or sideways. There's not far to go sideways, but you can, and I've seen people actually lay it on their side. After the hot tub, there was this descent down a fin. It was just big enough for the Jeeps. If you go offline on this one, and this one's even less width than the, uh, the gatekeeper, it's just barely enough for your Jeep to stay on the meat of the, of the fin. They've got arrows that you follow, so you make sure that you don't get too far to the right or left, go off the edge, into a hole. A little intimidating, but exciting and fun. Okay, everyone, good job on that last obstacle. We're going to go over here to the escalator and have lunch. You know, the toughest obstacle we saw today was the escalator, and I think it's probably one of the toughest ones out here. This obstacle is one of the most challenging for how well you can operate your rig. I drove part way up and took a look at it, but um, that was very, very intimidating. The thing that makes it really hard is the big pothole about halfway up and it's a frequent place for people to flop. Muscle Mark saying, you do it, I'll do it. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go for it, but I gotta get the right line, so I'll get up there and see how I do. I'm probably nuts, but I'll go, I'll drive up to it and see how I feel. So Muscle Mark dared me, if I went up the escalator first, he would go. So I took on that challenge and I went for it, but I, as I approached, I went up to it and I felt really tippy and my transmission slipped twice. You're good, you had a good line. Uh-oh. Marianne started up, I think her automatic transmission was a little bit low on fluid. Once she got a little, little vertical, her transmission quit engaging. And I took that as a sign not to go. <laughs> So I backed all the way back down. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't do it. <laughs> I made a bet with Mary Ann that if she would do it, I would follow right behind her. Pretty intimidating. Originally wasn't gonna do it. went up and into the hole, but he got a little sideways. His, his right, right rear dropped down in the hole, and the front left tire was waving high in the sky, probably four or five feet, I don't know. From I was at the very bottom watching. <laughs> Maybe it was 10, I don't know. <laughs> and I kept going, kept going, kept going, got a little too vertical, decided, no, that's not where I want to be. It looked scary, he had to back up and get himself way up on the sidewall to be able to complete this, and he did. He got himself wedged up on the right side of this wall, so he was center on that hole, and he was able to pull forward and keep going. So I backed down, reset. Jeff and I both agreed that's where I wanted to be. Second time around, went up, not a tire lifted, and actually it seemed, seemed pretty easy when you get the right line, but that's, that's how jeeping works. The second hump as you come over, 
There was some mud. I was hoping not to get my tires in that because it was already a tough enough obstacle and I didn't want my tires to be wet. There's really no way around it. You have to get at least two tires in, in the mud. So you just have to not panic, go slow, make sure you're holding on to your steering wheel and your, your line is just right and not too heavy on the throttle. You don't want to spin any tires. You don't want to lose any traction at all. It's got to be just right because if you slip, you're going to go from being just level and making it to in the hole. He made one little mistake, he corrected it, and he went right up the second time. And it was amazing. It was perfect the second time. Sometimes you got to make that one little mistake as long as it's not a deadly one. Right after the escalator, you basically get to the last named obstacle. It's called the tip over challenge. It's where you go up the side of a slick rock and it, it's really off camber. So if you hit that too quick, it could actually flip you or tip you. At the bottom today, what we saw was a very large pile of glass and plastic. So we knew that was a telltale sign of somebody had failed the tip over challenge. Even when you think you're done with the trail, at the end, you have to come down a very long rock garden through the desert. And we were tired uh, and we still had to wheel. There was a few more obstacles uh, to check out. Uh, I was beat, you know, I, I just wanted to get home and, and get refreshed. That whole rock garden is just strewn with lots of obstacles of boulders that are embedded, large uh, ledges. It was amazing how they wheeled down there and they really navigated it well. On day three, we went and did a trail called Top of the World. It was supposed to be a nice, easy, relaxing run and it ended up being pretty challenging and a whole lot of fun. Okay, get me down off of you. <laughs> Today we're going to do the iconic trail, Top of the World. Very popular trail, but it's not about the wheeling, it's about the destination. You get to the side of this beautiful overlook and everybody likes to get their uh, Jeep up on the ledge and get one of those poser pictures and they're really cool. The trail's not hard, like I said, a lot of embedded rocks, so you can pick some ledges and you can pick a few off-camber lines, but you don't have to. We should have a great run. another ledge but the ramp is on the right. So you the last day's ride has been really nice and mellow but there's some pretty good challenges. I don't know what to think. They told me this was an easy trail. It was up until this. The obstacles were easier. Um, but once we got to the top of the world, it was breathtaking. It was all worth it. All those three days, hot days, sweaty days, scary days at some times, it was all worth it. Ah, get away from the edge, I can't stand it! <laughs> and you're literally, it feels like you are on the top of the world. It is the most beautiful, scenic, highest trail I've ever been on. The views were just breathtaking. You could see Utah, you could see Colorado. Absolutely one of the most amazing trails I've ever seen at the top. I walked out to the very edge and it was just incredibly amazing. We couldn't have asked for a better ending to a better week. Planning this trip and, and driving all day from 6.30 in the morning until 11.30 at night was all worth coming to Moab. I am so grateful I came and it's absolutely beautiful here. I want to come back and do it again. It did not get any more epic than seeing what the top of the world looked like. Absolutely outstanding. Ending
Being here at the top of the world is the best way to end a, a wonderful wheeling adventure. <laughs>